Hello everybody, it's Michelle Young here, writer in residence for Arts Care in the Western Health Trust. I'm getting in touch with my third installment of my Upside Down story, um, uh, Emma Wayne's story. If you remember, she her dinner was ready and she was in the garden playing when she found a key. For example, this little key here. And I asked you to design a key, so it could have been a flying key or something like that. Anyway, in the second story, she then, or yeah, in the second part, she went down a hole and she had help by a gnarly tree, a gnarly tree and its roots took her and threw her down a hole and she ended up in an upside down world, which was completely different. Her feet were in the clouds and her red curly hair was standing on end because she was upside down. And I ended the last story with this letter here. Emily, it was a letter written to her and it says, Emily, we have been waiting for you. So it was all planned to get her into this upside down, topsy-turvy world, almost like fate, really. Fate called her. So this is the third installment. So are you ready? Get nice and cosy. Get a blankie. Uh, hot cup of chocolate, hot chocolate, something like that, and sit back and relax. Here we go. At that moment, in front of her eyes, the letter that had fallen to her feet started to dance and turn in the air. It folded its corners over and over until it resembled a little paper plane. It twirled and swirled in front of her as if asking Emily to follow into the unknown of this topsy-turvy -tur world, she went, bouncing on clouds every step of the way. She ran through a forest of trees that had pink mist as leaves. It was almost as if they were wearing candy floss wigs. She laughed as she noticed paper birds nestling inside that seemed to be rapping to each other rather than the sweet bird song that you'd normally expect. Flowers at the base of the trees, every colour of the rainbow, were body popping to the tune of the birds. Large rocks covered in moss unrolled into forest people with twig-like hair, and the tiny bubbles that floated in the air burst with little misty imps and forest pixies when they popped. And they would fly around suddenly. Yo, 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 hey girl, come over here, take a twirl. I'm Pops, the king of upside down. It's easy to tell by my bubble encrusted crown. He told her that him and his people needed to learn how to write. They had wanted to write legends of their ancestors and tie them through the trees of the forest so that the wind would whistle the stories from now until forever. So without time to wait, Emily got to work, teaching the, the mist pixies, the mist imps, the forest pixies, and the little rock people and the king himself how to write. So that is the end of the third instalment. I'll be in touch next week with the final instalment and now it's over to you. So I have got a few activities that you could choose to do. First, you might choose to draw this upside down world. So take a listen to the recording again and draw what you imagine it looks like. And if you want, you can add things in because I always love to get your ideas. Next, if you're feeling brave and you want a challenge, and you really, really like writing, you could write one of these legends. So what do you think is a legend? Are the legends surrounding this world? How, did it, how was it made? Was it made before time itself? How did the, how did the mist imps get there? How did the forest pixies get there? And what about the little rock people? How did they get there? And how are they all connected? Why do the trees have pink mist on top as leaves 
rather than leaves itself, and a bit of a mystery. But why do you think the flowers body pop to the birds that rap? Why indeed do these creatures seem to rap? Because the king was rapping, wasn't he? He was rapping and rhyming. So there you go. Loads of things to think about. So I'm going to pass that over to you now. And if you want to create this week, please feel free. I look forward to seeing all of your ideas and your creations. And I'll be in touch next week with a final installment. Hello everybody, it's Michelle here. Uh, I want to give you an example of a legend for those of you who are interested in the challenge. So I have written a little legend about the mist imps and it doesn't have to be very long, okay, but this is an example that you can lean on and I will, at the end of this, I'll have a little slide of um, phrases that you can use that will help guide you through your legend if you want to write one. Okay, so here we go. This is the legend of the mist imps. Long ago, before time itself, when the world was abuzz with fairies, dragons, and even dinosaurs, legend tells a story of the mist imps. They were the keepers of the mist, the shroud of dew by the river lands in the morning, and the veil between their world and the underworld at night. But legend has it that during the Ice Age, when the ice giants ruled the world, the mist imps fled. They fled because ice was not good for a mist imp. It would freeze them as they put out the mist. The mist would freeze and then the, the mist imp would be no more. So one by one, the mist imps fled to, to the tree of wisdom. This tree was a large tree at the back of a field that had gnarly branches. It was a very clever tree and at its root. During this time, the tree was ma made a little underworld, a topsy-turvy world underneath. The tree of wisdom was indeed the mother of the topsy-turvy world. And when the topsy-turvy world was ready, the tree one by one with its roots brought each little mist imp down so they could be safe and happy in their new world. And that, my friends, is the legend of the mist imps. Beware, though. They do come back into Earth now that the ice giants are away. away. So, if you ever see mist on the fields early in the morning, you can be sure that the mist imps have been out doing their mischief and magic.